Hi, my name is Robert Simmon, and I'm a data visualization engineer with Planet here in San Francisco. And today I'd like to talk about how we use Geographic Imager and Map Publisher to create maps with our satellite data. And here's an example of a finished product using the Planet Scope 3 meters per pixel uh, four band imagery uh, combined with some other data to make a map showing Arches National Park in Utah. And our process for doing this uh, involves Geographic Imager, Photoshop, Map Publisher, and Illustrator. And the workflow is to open, process, and crop the satellite data uh, in Photoshop and Geographic Imager. And this involves planet scope imagery and park boundary data. And then export that from Photoshop as a GeoTIFF and import the processed Im imagery and complementary geospatial vectors into Illustrator and Map Publisher. And that includes elevation contours, roads, and trails, and the park boundary again. And then export back from Illustrator into Photoshop to combine with a complementary raster data set. Uh, in this case, USGS uh, DEM converted to shaded relief. So the first step is to bring the planet scope analytic data, which is a scientific data set, um, four bands, uh, red, green, blue, near infrared in 16 bits per channel, and to import that into Photoshop, merge the separate scenes together, and then do color correction. And so to do that, you use file import and then GI advanced, advanced import. And then this is a um, screen capture of the dialog box for importing that. And so what you want to do is select all three of the imported images, uh, in this case, they're geotiffs. Uh, and then you want to set the color mode to RGB color and then move the, the bands into the right order and also remove the background. So there is some inconsistency on how different software handles no data. So we just color them black instead of trying to handle that with an alpha channel or something like that. And so for the color mode, you actually want to make sure that you have the channels assigned in the correct order. So ours is a scientific data set. And like Landsat Sentinel, uh, the band order goes from short wavelength to long, long wavelength. And so what you want to do is make sure that the correct channels are assigned to their counterparts in uh, Photoshop, which typically expects things in red, green, and blue. Um, and then for this case, we're going to turn off the near infrared band. Although if you wanted to do false color imagery, you can do the standard assigning false color to red or near infrared to red, red to green and green to blue. But in this case, we're just going to do red, green and blue. So that will import um, the three separate files. It will automatically mosaic them and put them in the right place spatially, um, keep all of the georeferencing intact. And then because it's a scientific data set, uh, the data itself will be very dark. And so the first thing I usually do is just change the levels um, 0 to 127, which is doubling the brightness of everything, just so I can get a sense of, of what I'm looking at, um, and then go on to do a full color correction. And that's on the right. That's an entire another talk all on by itself on how I do that. Um, but I'm just going to skip ahead and go to a full RGB, you know, fully color corrected image to work with. Um, then once that's imported, um, take a look at the geographic image or window. Um, it's got a lot of very helpful information like the image extents and the resolution, but really it's also just a, a good reality check to make sure that all of the georeferencing has arrived intact with your data set. Um, and it also allows uh, access to some fairly common commands. So the next step is to import the shapefile that represents the park boundary for Arches National Park. Um, and we'll do that so we know how to crop. Um, and so file import GI lines and areas import, um, and then just point it at the shape file. Uh, you can set it to automatically detect file type. Um, and then geographic imager will automatically bring that vector data into Photoshop as a path. So it retrains all of the vector information and do any reprojections necessary to move from, in this case, WGS84 into um, UTM, 
which is what our satellite data is stored as. So you can see, um, I just did a stroke on that path to, to show where the boundary is. Um, it's nicely clipped to the area of interest of the three satellite images that I imported and merged into one. Um, you can see a little fragment of Kenyan lands down in the lower left there. Um, but this was actually the national parks data set. Um, and so it throws away all of the extraneous data and that just keeps the stuff that's relevant to the image that you have uh, in hand. Um, and then the next step is to crop and then export for import into it to Illustrator. And so in this case, I'm doing an aspect ratio of eight and a half by 11, uh, ends up at 7,650 by 9,900 pixels. And then I'll save that as a GeoTIFF um, without the stroked boundary, because I want to do that in Illustrator, which has uh, much more capable controls for styling vectors. And so to import that GeoTIFF in Illustrator, um, you use Map Publisher, and what I do is I remember the dimensions, and then I will create a new Illustrator document that's either those exact dimensions or that aspect ratio. And just file new, set in your, your height and width in pixels or points, uh, either one works. Um, and then you import the image, uh, it should be an 8-bit eight eight bit per pixel GeoTIFF. Uh, import that into Illustrator with Map Publisher. Uh, reads the it GeoTIFF info and automatically creates a map view and an artboard that have the exact correct projection and scale. Um, and you do that just using file, import map data, import map data. And then once that's in, you'll, you're ready to import all of the complementary vector data to convert from an image to a map. So now we're going to use the multiple data import function instead of the simple import map data function. And that does two things. One, as it says on the tag, um, it allows you to import multiple files at once, uh, which is convenient. But more importantly, it allows you to set the projection not to be the projection of the input data, to, but to match the projection of the map view. And to do that, you make sure that you set it to use existing map view in document in the method dialog. Um, I also like enabling the spatial filter and that will automatically crop the vectors in the data set that you're importing to match the projection. Um, otherwise you'll end up with vectors all over the Illustrator workspace, um, lots of extra points that you might not necessarily want to deal with. And, and Illustrator might actually um, throw a fit in the process of trying to do that import. So it's another nice little touch uh, to be able to do that cropping uh, without having to, to turn to an external tool. And so that's what these dialog boxes look like. Um, again, you know, make sure that you have those selected, um, the imported data set selected, and then set it to use existing map view and document. Otherwise it's going to create new ones for each of the imported data sets. Um, set it to the map view that you want them to match, turn on the spatial filter, um, and then you can actually just point it to the existing map view um, and it'll automatically set those corner points and do the cropping. And that's what these vector data sets look like uh, when they're imported on top of the image in Illustrator. Um, lots of map publisher windows are open. Um, but it shows you sort of like you have the, the full Illustrator tool set as well as the Map Publisher GIS oriented tool set. So the first thing I want to do is to convert these contours, which are every 40 feet. Um, if they're uniform, they, they tend to either be too heavy and obscure the underlying imagery data, um, or you know, if you set the opacity down or, or reduce the, the line weight too much, you sort of lose the contours entirely. So um, what I'm going to do is show you how to conveniently set the contours to be emphasized every 200 feet and then have intervals at the 40 foot intervals uh, that have less weight to them. And for that, I use the map theme rules. Um, and this is where you can actually query the metadata uh, in the shape file and use that to style the vectors. Um, in this case, I'm going to use a function called modulo. Um, and what that does is it actually um, takes the remainder of uh, a number, and then if the remainder is zero, um, it'll select it. So for the 40 foot contours, um, every 200 feet, um, you divide by 100 will equal zero, the modulo will equal zero. And so we can use that for our main contour lines. 
And for the lighter contour lines, we can do the ones where the modulo is not equal to zero. So that's where the remainder um, is uneven. And so you can use both of those functions to set up two rules and then directly set the visual properties to reduce the weight of those contours. Uh, and that's what those look like, um, full res zoomed in. Um, so you can see how now instead of having the contours dominate the map, they're actually a, a piece of complementary and subsidiary information to the imagery itself. Um, the next thing to do is to use Illustrator's appearance dialog um, and palette to style the vectors representing the park boundary and the roads and the trails. Um, instead of simply using the stroke dialog box, um, appearance lets you to do very sophisticated effects with stacking strokes. Um, and so you can do multiple stroke widths, stroke widths to end up with very complex, um, uh, complex visual appearances to set different types of lines to represent different types of information. Um, in this case, I've actually got two strokes. Um, one is eight points and, and white, and the other is 12 points in black, and the 12 point one is actually beneath the white. And so it's gonna end up with an outline on the stroke. And so you end up with this effect for the roads and the trails. Also, um, the trails here I've, I've set to be dashed instead of solid lines. Um, so here's the detail, roads and trails mixed in with the contours mixed in with the image data itself. So pretty much done at this point with Illustrator and Map Publisher. Um, here's an example of the entire map. And to finish it off, what I'm gonna do is actually export into Photoshop again so that we can combine with another raster data set, uh, shaded relief derived from a DEM, to highlight the national park itself and to have the, um, the surrounding landscape fade into the background. Um, so here's a detail showing a little bit more of what the map itself looks like. Um, and then for the export step, what we wanna do is export the artboard as a layered Photoshop file. Um, map Publisher allows export of geotiffs, but if you do that, you lose all the layers. Um, and so for maximum flexibility in styling and to be able to do the masking that I wanna do, I actually wanna keep the layers intact. Um, and to do that, uh, you export to Photoshop, you export the artboard to, a pho to Photoshop, uh, make sure right layers is selected and make sure that maximum editability, editability is selected. Um, and that makes sure that everything arrives um, on separate layers so you can do editing in, in Photoshop. And so this is what that file looks like in the layers palette in Photoshop. And you can see that the roads, trails, um, land boundaries and contour lines, as well as the image, all come in as separate pieces. As I mentioned, um, unfortunately, there's no geographic information anymore. So what I do is I select all these layers and then I drag them back into that original GeoTIFF that was imported into Illustrator. And it's kind of clunky, but it allows you to have the most ability to fine tune your image and to fine tune your map in Photoshop. So the next step is to mosaic the shaded relief data with the satellite map. And use that with the mosaic function, um, select the document, in this case, it's a shaded relief, also made in geographic imager. Um, not really gonna go into the details of that right now. Um, but a couple things to, to look at. One is it's nice to crop to destination extents. Uh, that makes sure that you don't like change the size of your map uh, unless that's, that's what you wanna do. Um, but it tends to keep file, si file sizes reasonable when you do that. Um, and then there's some options in, in what order. And then if you are importing a layered file, what it does with the layers. And just so keep those in mind. Um, the shaded relief data set is actually quite a bit larger than Arches National Park itself. Um, here's the map area superimposed on the shaded relief. Um, 10 meters per pixel, so it's a huge file. So it's really uh, helpful to crop that down before merging it with the map of the park. And so to do that, I use the geocrop function and that allows me to crop one document to another document's extents. Um, and you just, you know, you click the, the button, which I've highlighted here, automatically sets everything and we'll crop the image down and then you can do the mosaicing. Um, so here is that 
a shaded relief file that's been transformed um, from WGS84 into UTM. Resolutions are matched from 10 meters to 3 meters. And it's set in as a, a different layer, uh, another layer in that Photoshop stack. So right now it's at the top. We're going to move it down to the bottom. And then I'm going to use the park boundary, which we already had, um, to create a, select, a selection and then a mask so that we can show the, the imagery inside the park and we can show the DEM outside the park. And to do that, I use the path palette to make a selection. Um, and then once you have a selection, in Photoshop's layers command, layer, layer mask, reveal selection, and that applies an alpha channel based on that selection, um, which shows the imagery inside the park, and as I said before, shows the DEM outside the park. And that's pretty much it. And so here's the entire map zoomed out, um, and then zooming in to HD, uh, full width, and so now you can start to see some of these styling details, which you can't see all the way zoomed out, um, and the full resolution detail, showing the annotation layers that we've added, all of the contour layers, and the park boundary. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can contact me at simon at planet.com or Twitter at rsimon, and I will upload some of the files that were used in this presentation and to make that map into this URL, go.planet.com slash Avenza, uh, so you can take a look and play around with them on yourselves. Thanks again.